Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It's time to have a look at all of the suggestions past developers for ground in June 2023, and there is an absolute metric ton of them, and a ton of actually really cool ones this time. Uh, this set of past the developers is probably my favorite of the year, and uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy it too. Let's get into the vehicles. The first vehicle is the T-54A. Not for the USSR though, but instead for Germany. The T-54A was used by East Germany and it was a licensed built version in Poland and exported to the GDR for a price of 433,376 German D mark. Between 1959 and 61, the GDR bought and received a total of 148 T-54As from Poland. It was primarily armed with the 100mm D10 TG L56 cannon. The biggest difference between the T-54A to the standard T-54 was the STP-1 Horizon vertical stabilizer, which stabilized the cannon and coaxial MG when driving to reduce the up and down movement of the gun. The stabilizer has also made short stop and fire procedures much more effective, and the STP-1, however, did not stabilize the turret horizontally, meaning the T-54A had to drive in a straight line to take advantage of the system. The stabilizer had an elevation and depression speed of 6 degrees per second. The T-54A utilized the W-54G engine, W-54 with improved filters and G-74 alternator, as well as a fully electric turret drive. The third external fuel tank was also added, which increased the fuel capacity to 810 litres. For the USSR, we have another version of the T-34. This is the Model 1943. Basically, this was the last major modification of the T-34 with the 76mm gun. Uh, production ran uh, running from the end of 1942 up into the spring of 1944, and while the initial production resembled the Model 1942 very closely, Starting from mid-43, the Model 43's most distinct feature was added, which was the cupola. Uh, basically, production of the familiar hexagonal turrets of the T-34-42 began in April of 42. This was a substantial improvement over the original rounded turret, providing a more ergonomic interior. However, the same troubles of the two-man turret crew and subpar vision devices remained. In August of 42, trials of a new transmission, idler and cupola were conducted. After testing, only the new transmission was approved for production, while the idler and cupola underwent further testing. Additionally, various other improvements such as a new engine ventilation, a 20mm thick roof, and new armour welding techniques led to the creation of an overall superior tank. The mass production of this specification of tank began on December 42, and was the new T-34 Model 43. The weight of this tank was increased to 30 tons from the 29.8 to the 42, and it was probably at the same time that the box-shaped rear stowage bins were deleted from production at factory number 183 UTZ, although they were still uh, to be found on factory number 112's late T-34 Model 1941 and 42s. In June of 43, production of the hexagonal turret with the cupola was approved for production. The cupola contained five vision slits in the sides. The hatch was split into two pieces. An additional Mark IV periscope was also added for the loader, mirroring the PTK-5 periscope for the gunner. Production likely started first at factory number 183 UTZ, but uh, quickly spread to the other five factories, then producing the T-34. By decree, all factories should have produced T-34 Model 43s with a cupola by September. For Japan, we have a Type 74E, the first Sensha Daitai. Now, this one is kind of interesting. The modification of the Type 74E was done most likely around 2002 for the Army Command exercise. The additional armor was only added to the 1st Company of the 1st Tank Battalion, with the 2nd Company of the 1st Tank Battalion only getting the paint job. While a precise figure for this modification is rather unknown, going by the standard setup of the JDSDF Tank Company, there is rather high chance that only a total of 4 vehicles were modified, all to varied extents. 
So Doza, Saidama, Turadama, Ayar Lamp, or Doza, Saidama, Turadama, or even just Saidama, Turadama, Ayar Lamp, and only Turadama. Uh, one of the few changes that all four known versions got are the additional armor for the 50 on the roof. The version uh, that is being suggested is the most armored and capable version, 95-0268. This version has all the spaced armor and the dozer while retaining the IR lamp. The additional spaced armor in game would obviously be around 10 millimeters of RHA, since we don't actually know when it is, but that's pretty much it. After 2003, there isn't really any information left in regards to these vehicles, so they were probably just changed back to their standard configurations. The next vehicle is the M1A2T Abrams for Taiwan, which is represented in the Chinese tree in the game. The M1A2T Abrams is a modified M1A2 set V2 main battle tank that has been specifically designed for the Taiwanese and Republic of China Army. In 2019, the US State Department approved Taiwan's request to purchase up to 108 modified M1A2 Abrams tanks to meet the new needs of the Taiwanese army. In June of 2022, the first two of 2018 were turned over to Taiwanese officers, allowing Taiwan to create a training program to train its aspiring tank brigades in preparation for following deliveries. Along with operating the M1A2T, the Taiwanese army is preparing underground fortifications and emplacements to assist in the vehicle's survival capabilities. Overall, the M1A2T is equipped with a number of advanced features that makes it a highly capable and versatile platform for a variety of military operations. One of the key features of the M1A2T is its updated digital fire control system. Compared to the base set V2, the M1A2T has received new microprocessors, display panels, memory, and interface to improve reaction capability and allow the tank's crew to quickly and accurately engage targets at long ranges, or in other words, increase the tank's first hit capabilities. The tank is also equipped with updated thermal imaging sites with hunter-killer capabilities developed by Raytheon which provide the crew with enhanced situational awareness in all lighting conditions. These sites could be updated to the third generation IFLIR in the future, and this advanced site system allows the tank to engage targets with precision, even in low light or adverse weather conditions. Another important feature of the M1A2T is its armor package. The tank is equipped with export composite armor, which provides excellent protection against a variety of threats, including armor-piercing rounds and shaped charges. The tank's armor package has been specifically designed to protect against threats from the front and sides, making it a highly survivable platform in combat. It is also highly mobile, being powered by the 1500 horsepower Honeywell AGT 1500C gas turbine engine that can propel the tank to speeds of up to 42 miles per hour. The tank is also equipped with a sophisticated suspension system that allows it to traverse rough terrain with ease, and this mobility makes the M1A2T a highly effective platform for a variety of military operations, including offensive maneuvers, reconnaissance in force, and defense. In terms of firepower, it has the 120mm M256 L44 smoothbore gun, which can fire a variety of ammunition types, including APFSDS and, of course, heat. This cannon's highly accurate and can engage targets at long range with precision, and the Taiwanese army will operate the General Dynamics KEW A1 APFSDST round that has been developed for export use with Taiwan, purchasing more than 7,800 of them. The tank is also equipped with a 7.62mm M240C coaxial machine gun and an M153A1E1 Crows LP remote controlled weapon station which is armed with an M2HB 50 caliber machine gun. The M1A2T Abrams is a capable and versatile main battle tank that has been specifically designed to meet the needs of the Taiwanese army. Its advanced features include a digital fire control system, thermal imaging sites, and improved armor package, make it a highly survivable and effective platform for a variety of military operations. Its mobility and firepower also make it a formidable opponent on the battlefield, and the introduction of the M1A2T Abrams into the Taiwanese Army's arsenal 
in 2024 is a significant boost to the country's defense capabilities and underscores Taiwan's commitment to maintaining a strong, capable military. I don't laugh at the fact that they've, um, you know, bought this. I think it's actually very good for them that they have. It's a very strong tank and obviously being supported by the, uh, well, the greatest military in the world. It's just the fact that this all reads like a PR statement because it's obviously been copy and pasted from the people who are selling the vehicle. We also have an Otto Malara Marder, which is the German-Italian TAM. So in the second decade of the 2000s, Rheinmetall was wondering how to increase the service life of the renowned and battle-hardened Marder IFV, seeing the huge amounts of platforms built and the potential that the various upgraded versions of the vehicle showed during the years. As war scenarios evolve fast, and seeing that large tank battles are less and less common, MBTs aren't the most convenient type of equipment, Having the combat potential of an MBT may be too excessive to deal with the majority of the modern era threats, but other armoured vehicles can be lacking in firepower and combat capabilities. In this scenario, a new niche is created, where a subpar MBT firepower is needed, but uh, the cost has to stay way lower, uh, the same niche where the existing CV-9105-120 light tanks are the landmarks both vehicles that aren't bought or in service by anybody. With the, <laughs> with the German army close to phasing out the 1970s IFE, Rheinmetall took the opportunity and started a joint venture with Otto Malara to create a medium MBT from the existing Marder in the hope to fulfill the needs of overseas countries that wanted to upgrade their militaries with low budget uh, the result was the Marder Revolution program, showed to the public for the first time at a 2012 Euro Satori, presented in two upgraded versions, one as an APC variant, with the modifications of ballistic protection comparable to Stenag Level 4+, mine protection comparable to 3A3B, improved ergonomics by lifting the top deck, and also installation of the MTU MB8A3 diesel engine that brings the power to 600 horsepower. There was also one presented as an MGS with the same modifications regarding the engine and the top deck but with a thicker armor package estimated to protect against at least 30mm shells and even stronger rounds on the front with enhanced heat protection. This version was developed as a joint private venture between Rheinmetall and Otto Malara seeking to equip the IFV with the Italian B1 Centauro turret and 105L52 gun transforming the platform into a medium MBT in all senses. Kind of. In 2016, as Indonesia have shown interest in the project at the Indo Defense 2016, Rheinmetall and Otto Malara showed yet another variant, without the armored package and equipped with the Centauro MGS turret with the same 105mm Otto Malara rifled gun. Uh, the standard HIPFAC systems, digital FCS, better thermals than the B1 variants and the LWS, etc. So uh, there are three variants and two which would make sense in the game. They look really fun and a marriage of the Marda and the Centauro sounds really good. The French get a howitzer, the AMX Mark 61. Uh, this is kind of an interesting one. It was a development in 1949 by the French army. Uh, during the 50s, the French army went into a complete rearming program that had the purpose to protect the nation and also get back into the arms race and not become just a, another customer for uh, foreign weapons. The lessons of World War II taught France the importance to have a self-propelled gun which was able to go 360 degrees. They needed something better than the M7 Priest, the M36 Jackson, and Cecily, which was a non-artillery tractor, converted into an SVG with a gun on the side. The new SPG needed to be carrying heavy firepower and also have great mobility. Recently, they had designed the MX-13. They saw this as a perfect base for their SPG, and building on new vehicles using existing base had a great advantage for supply and, of course, maintenance, as both vehicles would have many parts in common, and those parts are usually those that are likely to be often changed. So... The new gun they decided to use was the Obusier de 105 Model 1950, which was the first 105mm gun built after the Second World War on the western side. The gun was initially designed in 46 by Defa uh, to build a new towed gun, but the gun was then adapted for the AMX-13 chassis to make it an SBG, while remaining almost the same. It had a hydropneumatic recoil, 
relatively low velocity, but also incredibly long range. The French Mark or MK61 used the caliber 23 gun, while the export version for the Dutch army was to use a caliber 30, which increased both range and also velocity. The vehicle itself looks pretty impressive and also pretty fun. The Swedish gets the L100, which started its life during the 20s and the 30s, where Sweden was experimenting with different vehicle designs. By the early 1930s, it was requested that a tank be made with a similar layout to the Panzer I. The prototype was completed in 1934, along with the L10 and also L30. The first prototype was essentially a lightened version of the upcoming L60, coming in at only 4.5 tons and possessing a crew of two. Oddly, the vehicle was classified as a super light tank rather than a tankette. The prototype was mostly used to test out the new torsion bar suspension that would be used later. The chassis was demonstrated to Polish delegates in the mid-1930s as a multi-configurable tank with the options to use either machine guns or the Madsen 20mm autocannon. In the end, the incomplete prototype was unfortunately rejected. The main armament uh, on this thing was a 20mm, um, or at least supposed to be, uh, and uh, that would mean it could fire AP and also HE, and of course uh, it was the good old Madsen autocannon, which we see on a lot of Swedish vehicles. The last vehicle is for Israel, and it's the PT-76-2000. The base for this vehicle was the PT-76B, which we have in the game, but there was a bunch of upgrades on it to make it special. Basically, the PT-76-2000 was upgunned to mount a Belgian Cockrell 90mm Mark III cannon in place of the original 76.2mm D-56T cannon. This new gun was enabled to fire a much wider range of modern projectiles, including APFSDS, HEATFS, HESH, HE, and more. The gun is already in the game on stuff like the Orbital 74 and the C-13 T-90, and the coaxial was also replaced with an FN mag chambered in 7.62mm by 51 uh, NATO standard. So this allowed the gun to better fit with the modern NATO standard instead of relying on Russian ammo for the older SGMT. So the main uh, interesting thing about this is of course the new fancy dandy gun. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Millie Draper, Juan the Panda, Nick R. Kupila, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie B. Young, Peter Grayling, Jerry Provolt, Bereen, Alan Hacker, Sem Arslan, Uncle Bean, Derek R., and Lafouche for supporting the channel.